how many fast chargers do we need and where should they be located as the proportion of battery electric vehicles start to rise? Can petrol filling stations be repurposed as fast charger stations? Tesla aims to keep installing fast chargers to supply its own vehicles, but does it need the same number in proportion to the number of cars sold in Europe as it does in the United States? And how many rapid chargers will be needed by the non-Tesla brand of EVs? This video looks at the figures and explores the numbers. ICE vehicles cannot be charged at home and need a complex infrastructure to deliver fuel to filling stations. But in regions like North America or Europe, there is already an electrical grid that can deliver power straight to the home, to the workplace, to hotels and guest houses. Electrical demand fluctuates through the day and can vary a lot between summer and winter. If EVs are discouraged from charging when demand is already at a peak, then there is plenty of spare capacity in the system to charge EVs at other times of day. EV charging at off-peak times could be encouraged by pricing such as that used by Octopus Energy in the UK with a special rate of 5 pence per kilowatt hour at night when electrical demand is at its lowest. The next statistic we need to examine to determine how many fast chargers are needed is how many days does a vehicle travel in distance bands of 0 to 100 miles, 100 to 200, 200 to 300, 300 to 400, 400 to 500 and over 500 miles. And is this distance travelled on the main road network or on local routes? The statistics we have are mostly about the length and purpose of car journeys. The main source for US data is the Transportation Energy Data Book. And the last update was on August 30th, 2019. 70 million US households are estimated to have two or more vehicles. They are likely to adopt an EV first as the urban commuter and runabout, charging from home and reducing the need for petrol or fast charging in urban areas. For almost all trips, charging can be done at home. Fast charges are not needed for normal day-to-day -day use of EVs. But what about the longer trips? In the US, we are looking at the data for round-trip distances. 33% of longer trips are over 300 miles, and 90% of trips are by personal use vehicles. We can guess that most of the trips over 1,000 miles are by airplane. Some of these trips include an overnight stay that could be supported by a destination charger. The other longer trips by EV will need a fast charger en route. Only 3-6% to 6 of the miles travelled are on trips over 100 miles. If we compare the US statistics with the UK statistics taken from the UK government's most recent survey figures, in the UK 98% of all journeys by car are less than 100 miles return trip, 99.5% less than 300 miles. Norway can give us another insight into the adoption of EVs and the need for fast chargers. As of December the 31st 2019, Norway had a total of 2.769 million registered passenger cars. Norway is leading the way in terms of the proportion of EVs. In March 2019, there were 214,000 zero emission cars, corresponding to 7.9% of the passenger car total numbers. By the end of 2019, over 60,000 new passenger cars with zero emissions had been registered, 14,000 more than in 2018. Passenger cars with zero emissions had 42.4% of the market share in 2019, compared with 31% in 2018. In January 2020, another 4,236 new passenger cars with zero emissions were registered, 
This is 829 more than in January 2019. Passenger cars with zero emissions had 44.3% of the market share in January 2020. The proportion of EVs in the big cities is much higher than in rural areas. However, note that in Norway there are many two-car households where the EV is always charged at home and used for city commuting and shorter trips. This reduces the demand for high-speed chargers as the other ICE vehicle may be used for the longer trips. However, we are likely to see more two-car households with two EVs, particularly in the near future as EVs with a usable range of up to 500 miles become available. It's not just electric passenger cars that are becoming more numerous. Now there are 199 electric buses on Norwegian roads. It's much better for the life of the current generation of lithium-based batteries to be slow charged, where the EV sits for most of the time when not in use, charged at home, at work, at the hotel, at the campsite. So our next question is how much of the energy needed by an EV can be supplied through a home or workplace charging system. We don't need to build extra fast chargers for EVs for energy delivered at home. In the United States and in most of Europe, it is cheapest to supply electricity where possible through the existing grid to homes and places at work. A UK government analysis published in July 2019 estimated that 80% of all EV charging takes place at home. But not all users of EVs have access to a home or workplace charging system. In the UK, it is estimated that about one third of car owners don't have off-street parking where they can be charged. But at the moment, 70 to 80% of EV owners do have off-street parking. Charge at work facilities, charge at the shops, should be reserved for those users without access to charge at home facilities and users who cannot get back home without recharging, not a source of free electricity for those who already have access to their own home charge facilities. We can get some idea of current costs for installing fast chargers and slow chargers from recent reports. Pasadena is one step closer to owning the largest fast charging site for electric vehicles in the western United States. The City Council unanimously approved the purchase of 30 more charging stations for $687,000, adding to another 40 chargers on the same site alongside 25 Tesla superchargers. The Government of Canada will provide an additional $8 million Canadian dollars for more fast chargers in Ontario. The plan is to build 160 chargers at 73 locations, which would be about $110,000 per site and $50,000 per charger on average. Highways England has awarded £2.8 million for more than 50 new electric vehicle charge points to be built along the country's main routes, with contracts awarded to BP Chargemaster in the north and Swarco in the south. A fast charger might be able to fully charge between 20 and 30 EVs per day at a capital cost of 30000 to 20000 per EV supplied. But on average, an EV will very rarely need a full charge more than once a week. Over a week, a fast charger could keep 140 to 210 EVs on the road for a capital cost of $357 to $238 per EV kept on the road. For slow chargers in the UK, it currently costs about £800 to install a 7 kilowatt home charge unit. This will usually be keeping one EV on the road, a capital cost of £800 per EV on the road, but one slow charger at home could easily support two EVs. However, the low cost of electricity supplied to the home and the convenience makes this an excellent investment. For slow chargers in the UK installed in car parks, for example, five councils in Gwent, UK, will receive about £458,000 this year to install 73 charge points with 146 individual sockets across the region. These will be installed in residential car parks. At a cost of about £3,000 per socket, 
These slow charge points are likely to fully charge one vehicle per day or a capital cost of £3,000 per EV. On the basis of one EV through the day and another EV overnight, a capital cost of £1,570 per EV supplied per day. Over a week, this could keep 14 EVs on the road, or about £224 per EV kept on the road. China has the largest fast charging station in the world, according to China Southern Power Grid Company. It's run by an amalgam of three companies, including China Southern Power Grid. The station has a total of 637 fast chargers in 20,000 square metres, making it the world's largest EV charging station. It's located in Shenzhen and has a total distribution capacity of over 16,000 kilowatts and can service nearly 5,000 EVs per day and using on average about 160,000 kilowatt hours per day. This is eight vehicles per charger per day and that would be at around 32 kilowatt hours per vehicle. The article suggests 50% occupancy, which would allow a 50 kilowatt charger rate. But the newest chargers can supply 60 kilowatts. CSG currently operates over 100,000 fast chargers. Although a taxi might be charging every day, most vehicles will need to charge once a week or less. So this charging station could be keeping over 35,000 EVs charged. There are several competing new battery chemistries in development that are predicted to offer a full fast charge in 10 minutes when combined with an efficient battery management system. For most EV users without home charging facilities, this would only take 5 to 10 minutes each week. When planning for the future, we would do well to plan for these fast charging battery chemistries with ultra fast chargers able to deliver 500 kilowatts. It's also reasonable to plan for EV batteries supplying double the energy for the same weight and volume of batteries. This could be 120 kilowatt hour batteries, giving a usable range of 500 miles. So who will need to access fast chargers? Our conclusions are that we must consider two groups of users that will use fast charging. One group are those without any slow charging facilities at home or at work. In the future, these might represent a requirement for energy for 25% or less of all private vehicle energy consumption. But this might be reduced further by ride-hailing schemes or autonomous taxis. It would also be reduced further if more accommodation is provided with off-road car parking, with home charging facilities or with roadside charging. Tesla will need to keep a close watch on the number of Tesla vehicles sold to users without home charging facilities in order to plan any increase in Tesla supercharging stations in urban areas. There are no surveys that give such detailed information. The best information comes from the stats that Tesla collects of where existing Tesla vehicles are charging. The second group are those using fast charging on long distance routes and these could be about 5% of all private vehicle energy consumption. Existing petrol stations simply won't be needed to supply this demand for electricity, as the low cost of installing fast chargers is already resulting in fast charging stations being installed in car parks, supermarkets and so on. City malls are already seeing the potential to attract EV users to their car parks with the offer of many low-cost superchargers. If existing petrol stations in urban areas provide fast charging for EVs, over time they will still lose three quarters of their customers or three in four petrol stations will have to close so that those that remain remain viable as fast charging stations. I think there is scope for some existing petrol stations to use their car parks to provide secure overnight parking with slow charging. Petrol stations on long distance routes have the possible option to convert to EV fast charging stations, but they may be in competition with cafes and motels and shopping malls on the same routes also providing fast chargers. Pasadena is already doing that. And in Germany, the car manufacturer Porsche is opening a rapid charging station that can supply 7 megawatts, 
with 12 350 kilowatt rapid chargers, presumably as a way of promoting their cars. There are still many gaps in the supercharger network. Many cities in the US and Europe have no significant rapid chargers. Owners of EVs will look for alternative destinations that are better supplied. And how many superchargers will we need? The government travel surveys in the US and UK are simply not asking the right questions for detailed future planning of how and where electric vehicles will need to charge. Tesla alone of the EV manufacturers will be able to use its own charging stats to monitor the demand for charging and ensure that charging facilities on long distance routes meet peak demand. For vehicles with access to home charging, Tesla is likely to need many more fast chargers in the US than the UK per Tesla car on the road because of the larger proportion that travel the longer distances. The same applies to all EVs. More fast chargers will be needed in the US per EV on the road than in the UK. From the UK statistics, we can deduce that if EVs have a maximum usable range of 100 miles, only 2% of return ships need a fast charger. If EVs have a maximum usable range of 250 miles, only 1% of return trips need a fast charger. If Tesla could increase the usable range of its cars in the United States to 350 miles, it could reduce the need for fast chargers to a quarter of those needed for cars with a usable range of 250 miles. But for most EVs charging at home before a long trip, the electricity for the first 250 miles comes from the home charger and doesn't need a fast charger. So for a 500 mile round trip and a 250 mile usable range, only half of the energy needed is from a fast charger. When we look ahead to the near future, all of that 500 mile round trip energy could come from home charging. And half of a thousand mile round trip would come from home charging. The other half at the destination. Thank you for watching. I hope that this has been useful. And please subscribe to this channel.